You've set up TrueNAS, created your storage pools, and added users and groups, but the storage is still not accessible to us. Because we haven't shared it over the network yet. And before we do that, there's one critical step we need to get right. And that is permissions. In this video, we'll set those up properly and then walk through how to share your storage using SMB and NFS. So let's jump over to the datasets tab and set things up properly. But before we move forward, I've gone ahead and cleared out all the datasets we created earlier. That's because there are a few key settings we need to configure. Otherwise, we'll run into permission issues later on. Make sure to watch closely. There's a small setting in TrueNAS that can be confusing if overlooked. I'll highlight it when the time comes. So let's start building out our datasets. First up, I'm creating one for my personal use. Select the parent dataset. Then click on add dataset in the top right corner and give it a name. I'll call this one personal. Now here is that important setting I mentioned earlier. Look for the dataset preset option and change it to SMB if you're planning to use this dataset as a SMB network share. If you miss this, you could run into permission problems later. Below that, you'll see a checkbox for creating an SMB share. You can uncheck that for now. Since we haven't set up anything yet, we'll create the actual shares a bit later. Then hit save. So our first data set is ready. Now my TrueNAS server isn't just for me, my family uses it, and so does my team, so I create separate users for each of them. Let's create another data set and name it work. And one more for the team, that way we can test out different users and permission setups and see how everything behaves. Now that we've got our three data sets, it's time to set up ACL permissions. I'll start with a personal data set, click on it, then hit the edit button next to permissions. ACLs or access control lists give you precise control over who can access what. And since SMB shares are going to be accessed from Windows machines, ACLs are absolutely essential. I'm going to clear everything and start from scratch so it's easier to understand. For personal files, I want only my user to have access, so I'll set myself as both the owner and the group and check these boxes to apply the changes. Now let's add a new item to the access control list. Set the who field to owner and give it full control. Then add one more item, this time set who to group, and again, give it full control. Once everything looks good, click save access control list. And now if you look at the permission section, you'll see that the owner and group settings have been successfully applied to the personal data set. Our personal data set is now fully ready. We could share it over SMB or start taking snapshots right away, but we're not going to do that right now. It's better to plan things out first, especially when it comes to snapshots, because if you ever need to roll back, you'll have to roll back the entire data set. That's why I prefer creating nested data sets. This way, I can assign different permissions to each one while still keeping shared rules like snapshots on the parent. So to create a nested data set, first select the parent. I'll start by creating one for personal documents. And when you save it, you'll see a pop-up saying the parent has an ACL. Do you want to configure a new one for this too? For now, I'll just select return to pool list. You'll notice the permission is applied to root by default. Next, I'll add another data set Let's call this one media. It's still personal, but I want my family to have access to. You can plan your dataset layout based on your own needs. Now let's edit the ACL for documents. Everything here is inherited from the parent. We just need to change the user and group from root to tech. Now let's do the same for media, but this time I want everyone else to have read-only access. So I'll add another item to the ACL set the who field to everyone and set the permission to read. This is how we add additional permissions. However, keep in mind that giving everyone permission like this isn't ideal. I'm just doing this to show you. Now it's safe. Moving on to the work data set, I will use this to test ACL behavior by giving access only to user one. I'll clean up the extra ACL items, then set group permissions to full control. This setup is almost the same as the last one, but in this case, our tech user won't have access to the dataset, even though they're an admin. Now let's configure permissions for the team dataset. We can remove the extra ACL items again. Keep the owner as root, but change the group to team. Make sure to apply it by ticking this checkbox. And of course, I'll give the team full control. 
ACLs let you get really specific. You can give just the right access to the right people or groups. This setup is basic, just enough to get started. Over time, we can build much more complex configurations. Let's go ahead and save this. Now that all our data sets are set up with the right ACL permissions, we're ready to test them out as SMB shares. But before we do that, there's one small network configuration we need to make, because right now, TrueNAS is using DHCP, which means the IP can change at any time. And that's not ideal. So let's set a static IP. Head over to the Network tab, you'll see your active interface. Click the Edit button. First, disable DHCP, and also turn off Auto Configure IPv6. Now under Aliases, click Add, and set the static IP you want for TrueNAS. I'm using a 24 subnet mask here. Since we'll be testing access with three different users, and Windows doesn't let you connect multiple users to the same IP, I want to add two more static IPs as well, so each user can connect separately. You do not need that, I'm just doing it to test different users. Once you're done adding the static IPs, click Save. You'll get a prompt about the default gateway, but we don't need to change that, so just skip. Now to actually apply the changes, click Test Changes. This part's important. TrueNAS will give you 60 seconds to log in using one of the new IPs and confirm the setup. If you don't, it'll roll everything back automatically. So let's do that. Open the new IP in your browser, log in, and you'll see a pop-up asking you to save the network configuration. Click on Go to Network Settings, then save it. And that's it. We've now set the static IPs, and we're ready to start the SMB share service. Now that we've configured the network settings, it's finally time to get our SMB shares up and running. Head over to Shares, and under Windows SMB Shares, click Add. For the path, select the dataset you want to share. I'll start with the Documents dataset we set up earlier. Hit Save, and you'll get a pop-up asking to enable the SMB service. This also ensures it starts automatically with TrueNAS next time. Click Start, and just like that, your share is live. But before we jump into testing, I'm going to add a couple more shares the same way. I'll skip media for now. Now here's the cool part. Each dataset we just shared has its own set of permissions thanks to the ACLs we configured. That means users will only see what they're allowed to access, nothing more. All right, let's test it out and see if everything's working the way we expect. So let's open this PC on my Windows machine Click the three dots at the top, then select Map Network Drive. In the folder field, we'll enter the TrueNAS IP address, followed by the dataset name, in this exact format. Make sure the checkbox for reconnecting at login is checked, this way, the drive stays mapped even after a reboot. Since my Windows username and password match what I use on TrueNAS, I don't need to enter different credentials here. Choose a drive letter you like, and click Finish. And just like that, we're connected to the document's SMB share. You'll see we also have write permissions, so we can edit or save files here directly. Now let's see what happens if another user, someone who doesn't have access, tries to connect. I'll map a new drive, but this time I'll use a different IP address, since Windows won't let you connect to the same one with different credentials. I'll also check the box to connect using different credentials, then click Finish. When prompted, I'll log in as user1, and after entering the username and password, we get an error Windows cannot access. So let's disconnect that. Now here's the interesting part. There's another data set called Work, and that one's meant specifically for user 1. Let's try mapping that next. Same steps. Use the IP. Provide user 1's credentials. And we're in. We've got full access, including write permissions. But what if we flip it again? Can a tech user, who's actually an admin, access the work data set? I'll map the drive using the same IP. No need for different credentials this time, and still no access. Even with admin privileges, tech doesn't have permission for this share. Let's go ahead and disconnect that too. Now let's take a look at the team data set. This one's a bit different because everyone in the team is supposed to have access. I'm going to quickly map it using all three IP addresses with three different users. Starting with tech, we're in, no issues, and we've got write permissions too. I'll rename this drive so we can tell who it belongs to. Now let's try with user 1. 
And yep, same result, access granted, right access confirmed. Renaming that one as well. Finally, the last user. And again, no problems. All three users can access the team share and all of them can write to it. But here's something extra. We can actually check who created which file. Just right click any file or folder, open properties, then go to the security tab and you'll see the user listed there. I'll show this for the other two users as well so you can see the difference. And that's the basic setup for an SMB share on TrueNAS. There's still more to explore though, so feel free to play around with it. And if you end up doing something cool or unexpected with your setup, drop a comment. I'd love to see what you've built. Now let's create an NFS share. I'll head back to TrueNAS and open the Datasets tab. My NFS shares are mostly used by virtual machines, so I like to start by creating a dataset called InfraStorage. Since this isn't meant for SMB, I'll leave the dataset preset as generic. Inside that, I usually create different NFS shares or even Zvols depending on a use case. For now, I'll add another dataset and name it NFS share, again, keeping the preset generic. Next, let's edit the permissions for this dataset. Unlike SMB, this uses Unix permissions, not ACLs. We'll set the owner and group, apply the changes, and leave the default read, write, and execute permissions as they are. They work fine for this setup. Hit save. And now we're ready to share it. I'll switch over to the shares tab, move on to the Unix shares NFS section, and click add. Just like we did with SMB, I'll select the specific data set we want to share, then hit save. Don't forget to start the NFS service and make sure the checkbox is enabled so it starts automatically next time. And that's it, our NFS share is live and ready to use. To check that, I've opened the terminal and logged into an Ubuntu server virtual machine. To connect it to the NFS share, the first thing we need is the NFS common package, so go ahead and install that. Next, open up the slash etc slash fs tab file using sudo. Scroll to the bottom and add a new line, just like this. Make sure it matches exactly. If this line's off, the machine might not boot next time. So right here, this is the IP address of the TrueNAS server. This part is the NFS path you can see in TrueNAS. And this is where we want it mounted, the local directory path. That folder doesn't exist yet on my system. I'll create it after we save this file. Set the type to NFS, use defaults, underscore net dev for options and in the line with 00. zero. To save, hit Control plus X, then Y, then Enter. Now let's make that directory. I'm in slash home slash tech, so I'll make a folder called shares, and inside that, one called NFS underscore share. That's our mount point. Now just run sudo mount dash A to mount everything. Then, reload the systemd daemon with system ctl daemon reload. Yeah, make sure you use sudo here too. Alright, if now we head into that folder. There it is, our NFS share from TrueNAS. It's empty right now, which makes sense, we just created it. But once you mount this on your other VMs, it becomes a shared storage space. That's it for this one. If this was helpful, you might like the next one. See you there. Thanks for watching.